Hello everybody! We are here today to talk about a super exciting use case of Langfuse, that is building your own external evaluation pipelines. Throughout this video, we will be covering what are external evaluation pipelines, when should you consider building them, and last but not least, we will be covering a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to build your own evaluation pipeline. Let's start from the beginning. Our definition of an external evaluation pipeline is any kind of evaluation logic that runs outside of Langfuse. The environment where you run your code could be any kind of orchestrated container in your favorite cloud environment or even your CI CD pipelines. Now, the bigger question comes when should you consider building an external evaluation pipeline? First of all, I would really encourage you that before digging into external evaluation pipelines, you will check first the no-code evaluation templates that you can set up with the Langfuse UI, for which our co-founder Max has already done a tutorial under the tab Model-Based Evaluations in our docs. The reason for using these no-code evaluation templates is threefold. They are easier to implement, easier to deploy, and easier to maintain. So if they fit your use case, please go ahead and stick to them. Now, let's discuss when does it make sense to implement your own external evaluation pipeline. The first situation would be when you want to have very fine-grained control over when your evaluations are run. So let's say that you want your evaluations to be run on a given event-based trigger, like a given webhook endpoint being called. Or let's say that you want to create a cron job that runs your evaluations every day at the same time and takes a subsample of all the traces that were created on the previous day. These and even more scheduling scenarios become possible when you have full control over the logic of your evaluations. Another situation where you may want to have your own evaluation pipeline is when you need to implement very custom evaluation logic. The good thing is that once you go this route and you implement all your evaluation logic, it becomes possible to rely on existing evaluation frameworks such as DeepEvals, OpenAI Evals, or AppTrain. Also, implementing your own external evaluation pipelines allows you to have very fine-grained version control such that you can track your evaluation prompts, your evaluation system, or even implement meta prompts that allow you to keep iterating on the quality of your evaluations. If your use case fits any of the situations mentioned or you would like to reap any of these benefits, let's go ahead and start implementing your first evaluation pipeline. Before going ahead with the demo, please make sure that you have installed all the necessary dependencies in your runtime. And also, make sure that you have made available the necessary API keys, as we are going to be working with both the Langfuse client and the OpenAI client in this cell we are setting up these environment variables with our API keys. So the first step of our demo is to create some synthetic data that we can run through our external evaluation pipeline. And this is exactly what we are going to be doing here. For the rest of the demo, we are going to be working with a very simple mock application. We are going to be building a language model science communicator that will reply our users most burning questions about scientific topics in a joyful and engaging way. At this point, we have no real user queries. So the best thing that we can do to bootstrap our development is to use another language model uh, to generate plausible questions that our users may ask. And this is what we are accomplishing with this very simple prompt. And let's just go ahead and run it. And here we obtain a fascinating list of potential topics that we are going to be using as input for our core LLM application. Let's go ahead and put them in. The core of our app is this compact prompt that is specifying how do we expect our model to reply to our questions. Until now, no part of our application was tracked in Langfuse, but this is something that we are going to be changing right now. There's multiple ways in which we could be instrumenting our application to record the traces in Langfuse, but for the sake of simplicity, we are going to be relying on the Observe Decorator. Using the Observe Decorator is as simple as wrapping our language model calls in a function and then adding the Observe Decorator on top. In order to make our lives easier in the future, 
we are using the Langfuse context class in order to add a more descriptive name and some tags to our traces. And now let's run our core application logic such that we get our traces up in Langfuse. All right, perfect. And now after running our core application through all the potential user queries, the traces should already have appeared. And yes, here they are under the traces tab in the Langfuse platform. Independently of the execution environment that you choose, evaluation pipelines always consist of three steps. You need to somehow get the traces into the specific execution environment, then run your evaluation logic, and last, update the traces in Langfuse with the scores that you calculated. To make the rest of our demo even more illustrative, let's pick a very specific goal. Let's say that every day at 5 a.m., I want to sample 50 traces from the previous day and evaluate them. For getting the traces into our evaluation pipeline, we are going to be using the Langfuse client, and more specifically, we'll be using the fetch traces method. The fetch traces method is providing us with very handy attributes that, for example, empower us to set up very effective pagination, like page and limit, and other attributes that allow us to filter the traces that we retrieve. For example, by text, or we can even set up the time window of the traces that we retrieve. Next thing we'll be doing is setting up our evaluation logic. Fortunately for us, Langfuse gives us complete flexibility when it comes to the scores that we are saving, allowing for Boolean, categorical, and numerical scores. Let's start by setting up a custom categorical score, also known as string score. In this case, what I want to accomplish is profiling the tonality of the answers that our model gives. And I'm given in our prompt a set of eight potential tones to be detected in the answers of our model. And I'm providing some examples. In this case, I'm using multi-shot prompting because spotting tones or human emotions in text, it's a challenging task for current language models. So let's run it on one of our traces and see how it performs. And effectively, here is the user query, the model answer, and here is the categorical score that is a comma separated list of the three dominant tones that this is the output that we wanted to, to persist in Langfuse. And we will be doing that in the next steps. Now, for convenience, I'd encourage you to wrap it in a utility function whose only return is going to be the final score, such that you can reuse it in your evaluation logic at a later point. Let's also include a numerical score in our demo. And for this, we're going to be relying on the DeepEval framework, more specifically on the GEval framework that allows us to define numerical scores in plain English, as you can see here. So let's go ahead and run this function. And what is super cool about this framework is that it doesn't only give us a numerical score between zero and one, but it's also giving us the supporting reasoning behind. That makes it much more interpretable. Let's go for the final step and persist our evaluations back in Langfuse. For this, we are gonna be using again the Langfuse client but this time we'll be using the score method. For the score method, it's very important that we have the ID of the trace that we would like to update. And we need to set up a value that, as I was saying before, it can be Boolean, numerical, and categorical, or a string. And we also have an optional parameter that is a comment. And in this case, I thought that it would be very useful for interpretability to also include the reasoning behind our deep eval score that we calculated in the previous step. Let's now create a script that puts together all the previous steps. And remember, our goal is that every day at 5 a.m. we are evaluating 50 traces in an incremental way. So let's say in batches of 10 traces for the sake of this demo. If you pay attention, the outermost loop is iterating through the batches of traces, while the innermost is iterating through each individual trace. Unless the output of this trace is known, what we are going to be doing is using the Langfuse client to persist the tone score 
that we defined above, we are going to be calculating the joyfulness score that we also defined above, and we are going to be using again the length use client in order to persist this second score. So now let's go ahead and process all the traces that we generated above. All right, so all the traces have been processed successfully. Let's go back to Langfios, and here we go. Here are our results. Now we have a joyfulness score for every single trace, for which we have a little a speech bubble here that will show the comment, so the reasoning behind the score, and we also have our categorical score for the tone of the answers. So we were able to successfully attach to existing traces the newly calculated scores using our external evaluation pipeline. That was it for today. Thank you so much for your time and attention. We hope that you live with a better impression about what does it take to build an external evaluation pipeline, when does it make sense to build them, and even how to create your own synthetic data in order to test your external evaluation pipeline. And if you have any kind of feedback or comments, we are looking forward to hearing them. And we are delighted to support you building the future of language model applications using Langfields. See you in the next one. Ciao.